coming to Rage Against the Mainstream for the first time, um, our, well, your new friend, our old friend, Damon Clark from Erie Weather. Hello. So, I guess to kind of give like a little backstory on this, I know I said we're going to act like this is the first time we ever talked, but there was an interview that had, that was supposed to come out last year and we were having technical difficulties and then due to your schedule, my schedule, your management schedule, we just never reconnected. But I'm glad to have you back. <laughs> I'm stoked to be back. Man. I'm glad we could work this out. Oh, absolutely. So this has been a pretty busy year for you so far. Released Summer Song back in July, and you just released Okay, Yeah, Sure, Whatever, August 31st. The time that we're recording this now is uh, September 1st, so this is fresh. Yes. Yeah. So, is this going to be something that's going to be part of, like, an EP or an album, or is it just singles? Uh, It's going to be an EP. Uh, I'm hoping to have it out by next month <laughs> but that might be ambitious uh but yeah it's gonna be an ep i have uh six six songs maybe seven songs ready nice yeah so the other thing too is we were supposed to do this uh last week or the week before but um you were at uh comic-con yes. which one were you at uh, Las Cruces Comic Con. My girlfriend is a professional cosplayer, and she was one of the guests, so I had to help her with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, what does she uh, what she cosplay as? Uh, for that convention, she was Azula from Avatar: The Last Airbender. Oh, okay. And, uh, and Squirrel Girl. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a couple weeks back, I went to uh, Monster Mania in uh cherry hill and uh just the horror movie con and Mm -hmm. um i know it's not horror movie related i mean i guess depending on who you uh, i don't know i don't think it's horror movie related but i go like full blown like full like retard with ghostbusters (laughs) nice (laughs) yeah it's it's so it's so funny because i remember a time where i was like oh my god i would never do something like that but that's just ridiculous and then you do it once, and then it's just like I can't wait for the next one. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's super fun. It's it's so awesome, and it's it was really nice. Like we had a really great time there, and it's it's her thing, you know. And I just love supporting her, like she supports me. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So I want to get into summer song and okay, yeah, sure, whatever. Um, Obviously, I've listened to all of your music prior to this, obviously from last year. But these two songs, I think that these are just absolutely amazing. And Thank you. if anyone's listening to this right now and you haven't checked them either of these songs out or any of the Erie Weather catalog, I would strongly suggest to do it. <clears throat> now, can you go into a little bit of? Um, I guess where did these songs come from? Where what how did you manifest these? Yeah, um so I mean really the well so for Summer Song, I just really wanted cuz we were working on this EP for a really long time and I kind of just like was listening back to it and I realized like I don't have like any punk songs on this EP. Like it's nothing but slow songs. Like this is really weird. Like, this is weird, guys. Like, we're not going to have a fun time playing this. Like, it's going to be a slow, weird thing. Um, So I kind of just was, like, trying to figure something out for a while. And then um, my bassist slash producer, um, he had the, like, main riff of the song. And, like, I heard it, and I, like, instantly, like, there's, like, no hesitation. Like, I instantly knew what I was going to do with that. I was like, okay, everything else besides that main riff that you wrote, we're going to, we're going to cut all that. That main riff is staying and we're going to put a drum solo in the beginning. And then like, here's how the rest of the song goes. And I, I kind of just wrote it really fast musically. And then lyrically, it was like, I, I was really overthinking it. I was like, there's so many like cheesy 
lyrics like i should i should put a little more effort into this but then i was like you know what no dude it's this is pop punk it could be silly like and so a lot of the lyrics that made it onto that song are like the first lyrics that i wrote i was just like yeah this is i'll fix this later but then like looking back i was like you know this isn't bad this works i'm gonna keep it um and then okay yeah sure whatever it's like even more silly like than that because i i remember i was like just laying in bed with my girlfriend and i was i literally just said okay yeah sure whatever and then i was like you know that'd be really funny as a song <laughs> and like it was literally just that i was like i wonder if i could make that into a song and so i picked up a guitar and like i literally just played the first chords that came to mind and it was just, that exact same melody that's in the song and it just kind of came together like really naturally and so a lot of what you're hearing on that song also is you know just my not my guitar playing because I always have my bassist or my guitarist play the guitar but those are like 100% all the things that I wrote and this is one of the only songs where it's like I pretty much fully wrote the whole thing. So it was really nice to, to figure that out. That's awesome. So yeah. Erie Weather, is it more of a collaborative effort or is it like, uh, like if you were to put like a percentage of it, like are you guys like hashing these out like together or are you coming to the group with, you know, like, like at least ideas of songs? Um, so it is kind of a weird project because it's it it is banned, but it's kind of been one of those things where it's like I, I've been I, I started it as a solo artist and kind of slowly but surely it's been forming more into a band, but I've always made it like very clear that nobody else has to be there except for me. Oh look at my cat wants to be in the interview. <laughs> yeah. Um but uh yeah, like it, it's a lot of it starts with with my songs. Like I will be the one to be like, all right, I, I wrote this song, you know, let's kind of hash it out and figure it out. Um, but kind of slowly but surely, it's been forming more into just like an actual project. Um, and everybody's been contributing so much. Like it, it's turned out great too. Like a lot of these songs I couldn't have made without these guys. Like especially coming from my last project where I was just so like not as much a part of writing the music um I, and really just more of a creative director and so that's really where like this project began like I wanted to make my own music and stuff but having these guys you know really have my back and like see the vision and, and be a collaborative effort has been fantastic so it's a really long-winded way of saying we're still figuring it out, but it's really <laughs> like I'm the only one that has to be there. If the other guys wanted to quit or whatever, it's no harm, no foul. Like that's totally fine, and they understand that I would still keep this going as my thing. So it's almost in a way it'd be like Panic at the Disco or Falling in Reverse, right? Like yeah, Ronnie's the only one that has to be there. Brendan Yuri is the only one that has to be there, and it's still the same thing. Um, but I love these guys that I'm working with right now and I will work with them as long as they'll love working with me. So where'd you go about finding these guys? Were they just like local dudes or friends of friends or? Um, so actually it, it the, it all kind of stems from, um, uh, my girlfriend, <laughs> my guitarist, Jason was her roommate um they they had known each other for years like had been friends and kind of grew up in the same circles and um yeah we uh once i came over to her house and i started hanging out with him he kind of became my other girlfriend and uh and he is the one that introduced me to ty or i should say reintroduced me because i had met him once before um in a really weird situation and then um he also introduced me to to our drummer Stefan and like I think the first song we all worked on together was I'm in trouble yeah and um 
like it it just worked out so well i was just like so like i know i just hired you guys on as like studio musicians but do you guys want to just like be, be in my backing band and luckily they all said yes and i was like thank god because <laughs> like <laughs> my drummer stefan is like one of the most eclectic smart amazing drummers i've ever met like and i've met a lot but that guy can do anything like he can go from being in like this super crazy death metal band to being in like a progressive hard rock band to like doing pop punk Travis Barker drums like it's insane and then Ty my my bassist is just such a fun producer and he he just understands musically what I like and like what I'm going for more than anybody and then you know, Jason is just like, I love working with Jason and, and he's a really good writer in his own right. Um, he writes all of his solos with um, with the help of Ty, like, because Jason comes from like this like metal background. So a lot of his solos end up being like really crazy. And then Ty has to be like, you know, make that a little dumber. <laughs> like you're, you're overcomplicating it. Just let's simplify it. Um, and also like, what I like about Jason is his picking style is very similar to mine. And so it, it just sounds how like I would play guitar. Cause I think a lot of people like, and I think if you're a musician or a guitarist, you understand this more than like the regular person would, but every guitarist could play the same thing and it'll all sound differently. Yeah. Like, like you could play a Van Halen song but it's not going to really sound like Eddie. Exactly. Um, but for some reason, Jason's just right amount of slop is just exactly what mine is, and it works out great. That's awesome. So is there, um, is there more stuff coming in the future? Or is there, I mean, like, obviously, like we talked about an EP, but is there more material being written now? Yes. Oh, the writing never stops. <laughs> like, it's a problem. Um, well, that's how you know you got a good band. Yeah, yeah. I have just written on my phone probably three albums worth of material. Um, and then, like, things that, like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to record with the band at some point. I think I think we have a good like album's worth. There's some stuff in there that's definitely not good, <laughs> but there's a good album's worth of good stuff. Nice. So I kind of, well, since we obviously didn't get to do like the, the introduction style interview like we did before, I want to bring this back to the beginning. And so people can get an idea of who you are and what you're about. So obviously we all know you're Damon Clark. Now, where where does your musical influences come from, and where do you get your vocal styling from? Because for me, I hear a very strong pop punk influence. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Um, so that's like really the first love and, and first type of music that I discovered on my own. I mean, it it, it really stems from like more like hardcore punk from the from like the eighties. But then, um, you know, that was, I, I always wanted something more poppy. And then, like, around that time, my dad showed me, like, Blink-182. And it just was, like, a downward spiral of, like, whoa, what what else is there? I didn't know that that, like, existed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, like, yeah, I mean, Blink-182 and um, Sum 41, Good Charlotte, Green Day, um you know all those guys like really influenced me and especially with like the music i'm writing now i would say all of those guys um but then like there's also you know the the, the other side of that is like i also grew up really loving like that early 2000s emo wave of like my chemical romance and the used and senses fail like I also take a lot of influence from that. Like, oh, and uh, obviously Fallout Boy, who's like that fun middle ground of both. Um, and and Brendan Urie, like all of those 
things kind of going on at once really helped develop my style of playing. Oh, and I also, I can't not also forget Newfound Glory. They were also super huge influence on me. Um, yeah, I mean, like all of those guys, like and all that music just going on kind of all at the same time was uh, really what helped the most, I think. Um, and I, I would say like vocally, probably Gerard Way and Brandon Urie and Patrick Stump are all kind of like my biggest influences. I think, you know, those those singers are the people that, you know, taught me how to sing. Um, you know, I, I just, when I was first starting in music, I just, those were always the covers that my friends would want to do. And nobody else in my friend group wanted to sing. Everybody wanted to play guitar. And I was like, we can't be a band of four guitarists. It doesn't make sense. Somebody <laughs> has to sing. And I, they were just like, well, then you do it. And I was like, I, okay. <laughs> so. Well, that's the thing, too. Like, you can hear that you can definitely hear the strong, like, the influence of all those guys. Like, when you're hearing your songs and you have those, like, the harmonies that are, like, quintessential for that style of music you're like you need to have those harmonies if you don't have them then you don't have it period and going back to bands like my chemical romance and stuff it's it's strange now it's like got you know like i grew up in you know the same time where these bands are popular and they all just kind of fell to the wayside and it's, we're starting to see this like emo pop punk resurgence as of late i i think it's really crazy i i mean it almost seemed like back then, it's like, you know, think about it now. It's like, this could have been a fad and it could have went away. And it could have been just, a, you know, another footnote in the annals of music history. But it's just so funny, like, how strong the fan base was for all this music for it all to come back now. Yeah. No, I, I definitely agree. And what's funny is, like, I kind of predicted it and all of my old bandmates made fun of me. I was like, <laughs> I'm telling you guys. Like, give it a couple of years. I think this was, like, 2017. I was like, give it a couple of years, and I swear that people my age are going to be looking for that specific nostalgia factor. Like, it's going to go crazy. And yeah. so seeing it actually happen just, like, is so gratifying to be like, yes, I knew I was right. <laughs> like, My Chemical Romance just played in Philly, <laughs> I think it was a couple days ago. Like, it, it, it's it's just funny, like, how fresh all this is, and it's bringing in like new fans of this music too. It's just so wild to me because, mm -hmm. you know, like I remember like being in high school and these bands were popular and then it just stopped. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, it definitely did. Like it, it, I don't know. I don't know. what happened. <clears throat> I guess like everybody stopped wanting to make that kind of music and just like, I remember like 2010, that's when everybody was like metalcore. That's all we're doing is metalcore. Yeah. And then like, after that, it just kind of just went away. People just started doing everything else but that. So it is it is definitely really interesting to see this kind of circle of, of emo and pop punk coming back. So if anyone has dug on your YouTube channel, there's one particular cover. I know I brought this up to you before. Hybrid Moments. <laughs> so I take it you're, you obviously are a Misfits fan as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love them. They're one of my favorite bands of all time. Now, here comes the burning question. I think that I think I know your answer to this, but um, Graves or Danzig? It is it is tough. So that's something that always flip flops because I love them both so much for so many different reasons. Um, I think just. I think today I'm going to go with Danzig. Okay. I think I think today I'll go with Danzig because <laughs> just the songs that they wrote in such a short amount of time, um, it, it's just incredible. And, and all of them being so good. You know, like, there's, what, two Michael Graves albums? And, mm -hmm. and those are all also great, but it's, you know, none of it's Astro Zombies. <laughs> Now, see, I'm on the uh, I'm on the opposite end of that. 
I could never get like, I, I don't know. Like I never got Glenn Danzig at all. Like <laughs> him and like Jim Morrison are like two vocalists that I could never get behind. And then <laughs> like I don't know why there's just like something in me that was like, you are not going to like them and that's it. <laughs> hey, but, man, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> the the only argument I could make for Michael Graves is I mean, if you like the whole polished sound and stuff, and if you like the theatrics that are involved with the Graves era, I mean, uh, American Psycho and Famous Monsters. I mean, Famous Monsters, that's, that album's like on repeat all the time. Mm-hmm. I love it, that album so much. It was just, I don't know. They did, I, I'm surprised with when that album came out that it wasn't bigger than what it was. Like, like, obviously, like, you know, it made them a household name again. But, like, I don't know. Like, you think of, like, Descending Angel and, mm-hmm. you know, like, Dust to Dust. Like, like, why did these songs not ever hit the mainstream? Like, people yeah. would have absolutely fell in love with these songs. Oh, yeah. It's just no, so I crazy. I totally agree. That Famous Monsters in particular is just such a great album, and it's, the writing on it's just so good. I mean, like Saturday Night is like the weirdest. Like it doesn't belong anywhere on that album, and yet it's so amazing. Yeah, it's like this. It doesn't make sense, but like it's it's so good. And just like the whole, especially the visual aesthetics of that era is just incredible. Like last year, I was Michael Graves for Halloween because it's just so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like with his era of the Misfits, there was you know like the bright colors associated with it. It was just like, it was, it was more theatrics than before. Like, I, I mean, I guess because you had like the tough guy persona of Danzig and Jerry only and, you know, Doyle from back then. And now it was just like, they totally embraced like the horror punk aesthetic. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I, I literally cannot say enough good things about those two albums. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, they're they're fantastic. Like I said, I I love I just love the Misfits, um, minus the like Jerry only era of just where the band is just him. That's where uh, one of the instances where it does not work. <laughs> um, but uh, you mean those that the golden era of the Misfits? Come on, get out of here! No, I'm leaving <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, I I I just really love. Michael Graves and and back like I just I love that all so much and it's cool that they're they're back with Danzig like I would still I don't know if I'd want to pay those prices but like I would love to see that show (laughs) yeah the um the other co-host of my show he's so that that's where the split is he's a diehard Danzig guy and I'm diehard Graves guy he's went and saw the the Misfits reunion show you see he saw two of them and it was just like I was like, man, you like them that much? Yeah. Like, I remember, like, contemplating whether oh, or not oh, I was oh, going to spend... Oh, no, uh, we froze. Uh, are we back? Yeah, we're back. Okay. Because <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> I, I, I said to him, I was like, I remember a time where I was contemplating whether or not I should spend $120 for Van Halen tickets. And, like, I really like Van Halen. And I was like, man, that, those Misfits tickets are really expensive, dude. Are you sure? And then <laughs> and then the next, you know, the, I think it was, like, a few months after that, he went and paid to go see Tool. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I like Tool and all, too, but, but the, those tickets were a little pricey. Yeah. You actually, uh, I mean, you know, like. Oh, no, we froze again. All right, I think we're back now. Maybe? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Hey, we're all human. This is an imperfect system. Skype (laughs) needs to get on their game. I mean, like, I like what they're doing, but they need to get a little bit better with this. (laughs) (laughs) One band that I really can't get behind with the ticket prices, well, actually two bands. One was Foo Fighters. Because I, they played one of the, the, you know, one of the outdoor venues around here, and lawn seats were one hundred and twenty five dollars, and I was like, that is insane. Like I've seen countless bands in the lawn for twenty five dollars. Like why, why yeah. is or what, what makes Foo Fighters so special? But uh, regardless, and now the, another big one is Rage Against the Machine. Yeah, those prices are just 
absolutely astronomical. And I, it, it kind of annoys me because they, it goes against their whole like, you know, like anti-capitalist type stance. And it's like, well, now you're just cash grabbing this whole thing. Yeah. But no. <laughs> so speaking of shows, what do you guys have lined up for, I, I guess, the remaining of the summer and going into the fall? Do you guys have anything planned? Um, well, nothing. So we do have a couple things planned that haven't really been announced yet. Um, but they are more towards the back half of fall and winter. Um, but I don't know if I could say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We, we have, we have a, a show <clears throat> planned and confirmed, just not announced. But it, yes. There will be some shows. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> um, are you coming over? Uh, well, where's it going? To, where's a roundabout area where the shows are going to be? Are you able to um, say that? The the one that's confirmed is like is in Phoenix. So we'll be in Phoenix, and we are we're hoping next year to make get out. And possibly LA but we're we're working on some things. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So I guess what what is now um what's now the game plan with Erie Weather? Cuz uh you know like do you have like a projected like when this EP is supposed to come out and everything moving forward? Yeah, um the the, the EP I mean the original goal this year was to have it out in October, but we've been working so just like intensely on it. And like, I feel sometimes I feel a little, little Kanye ish. <laughs> where I work on something super hard and then like I listen back to it and I'm like, I hate everything we just did. So let's rework on all of it. Um, so I, I'm going to hope for November. But at the very latest, very like, this is insane to even say, but at the very latest, January. Okay. I will, but like, I'm hoping I'll have it out before then. If I do get it out in January, though, I will also have a second EP coming out next year. I have the music written, it just needs to be recorded with the guys. So definitely, it, there will be two EPs coming out within the next year. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, I guess uh, well, another one of the one of the main things I wanted to ask you too is, how would you define your guys' sound? Now, like obviously, there's elements of pop punk, and there's like elements of like kind of uh, like experimental type music with you know all the uh, the electronic sounds and stuff. I don't feel like it's mm -hmm. totally fair to label you guys as a pop punk band. So what what do you guys label yourselves as? You know, it's that's actually like a super good question because I I've I've thought of that also because like I do think it's unfair to say a pop punk band because I think there's I mean especially because you know you haven't heard it yet but like this EP has so much stuff on it so like there's there's definitely pop punk influence on there, but there's also like that, you know, early 2000s power pop kind of sound. Um, and, but there's also like oh, some like alternative, you know, grunge type sounds. And it, it's so, it's, it's really hard to say. I mean, overall though, I guess the safe say would be alternative, right? Like, alternative is such a vast like it's so broad term yeah super super broad term so i i just say we're alternative um but like if i'm feeling like real like whatever on it then i i do just say yeah we're just just pop puncture yeah that works because <laughs> <laughs> that that's the thing that's funny too when you have bands that are labeled like as just straight pop punk and like the, you know, they kind of have that whole stigma around it. it. You always get the impression that you know it's just 
four chord, verse, chorus, verse, bridge, chorus, over. But when we hear your music, it's it, there's just more to it. There, it. It's got more depth. It has it, it has more of a substance to it. That's the only reason why I was uh, uh, why I was even asking that question to begin with, because there's just so much. So how how do you guys go about like writing these songs that have like the experimental or alternative type stylings in it or in them? Um, you know, it, it's it all just kind of stems from my brain. <laughs> um, you know, I I just I like trying new things and I like I like trying to find new sounds, you know, like I listen to so much music and, and so much different styles of music, like um and so it's always just trying to be like how can I how can I use all of this influence and, and try to make something that sounds new and fresh and um you know I learned a lot of songwriting from you know just all the people I've worked with throughout the years you know um working with guys like Maddie Hoffman uh who's just this incredible guitar player he's now the guitar player for Escape the Fate and um you know I remember we were just like kids when we were in our first band together and he taught me so much like he is the person that really taught me you know, like the understanding of guitar and the understanding of music. And he was, you know, such a, a vital part in my my learning of music because he was the first person I ever met that like really was like, I want to try to see what happens when I put a solo over a rap beat. And, you know, we're talking, this is God, like this would be like 2013, 2014, before that was even like a, ever a thought. and you know, then going on and working with, um, you know, Matt Good from from first to last, and seeing how he works and how he can break down a guitar part, and like seeing like how how he does it, it also is crazy interesting. And then working with, you know, the the Money Brothers for as long as I did, and and seeing their understanding of song structure, it's it's just really just learning from all those things, and then trying to just not be scared of trying new things you know you, you never get anything new if you don't try anything and search sure it's like it sometimes it just doesn't work you know sometimes like it flat out is just like oh my god we shouldn't have made that that's awful <laughs> um but i think more often than not it's more just like oh that's that's super cool yeah let's try it because that's the thing too there's no right or wrong way to do any of this and you know, like like all the all the acts that you were just talking about, they all have varying styles of writing, and it's just all just so vastly different. It's just, yeah. it's just music is just great. <laughs> yeah, so, it's, it's just like weird. You know, music is weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you were saying that you listen to you know uh, all different styles and everything in music. What is currently being played on your Spotify or Apple Music or whatever your streaming platform is? Um, I use both, but like, because I'm weird. If I want to listen to an album, then I will listen it, to it on Apple Music. But if I want a playlist, I always just go on Spotify. It's so weird because it's like I can do both on either. It doesn't matter, but my brain is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, right now I'm listening to a lot of Red Hot Chili Peppers, um, and um, I really like the new Black Bear album. Yeah, I'm listening to pretty much just that at the moment. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's another thing, too. Another band that just came back from out of the woodwork, out of nowhere, was Red Hot Chili Peppers. They released that, uh, what, was, what was that song called? Black Sun? I think it was the, yeah. new, the newest single. And, and that was another thing, too, I thought was so strange that came out. It was like, so Anthony Kiedis is Scottish now. Yeah, oh my God, dude. That whole album is so weird. Um, so at like in one instance, like, I, I get it and I like it for the fact that like, oh, so it's just these guys 
who haven't really worked together in the last 10 years, just getting together and saying, you know, like, we don't need to worry about radio. We don't need to worry about any of that. Let's just write some stuff and write weird stuff. And like, so for that, I respect it. Uh, but I don't think it's good. <laughs> um, <laughs> they did release a song like like a week or two ago called uh, Tip of My Tongue. And that was actually better. That was like them actually being like, okay, okay, let's write like a radio single. And that one's very blood sugar sex magic. And so it's not like the best, but it's like, okay. I just, just give me some more like Californication. Give me some, some more, by the way, like give me some of that. I, I just want that and I'll be happy. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> so I guess to kind of wrap this thing up here, um, where can people find you on social medias? Where can they find you? Uh, well, I guess, uh, which streaming platforms is Eerie Weather on? Where can people get in touch with you? Uh, you can just on all, all social media, I made sure to make it as easy as possible. It is at Eerie Weather, one word, all lowercase, on everything. I don't know how I scored that. Like, I don't know how not one person had that before. Um, but it's just all one one word, Eerie Weather, on everything. And then on Spotify, you can look me up, Eerie Weather, two separate words, <laughs> on, on all streaming services. But yeah, just if you ever want to follow me for updates, just look me up on Instagram. It's probably the one that I use the most, just at Eerie Weather. Awesome. And before I let you go here, I wanted to say congratulations on almost 50,000 views for Summer Song on YouTube. Thank you. I was the art director on that one, so thank you. <laughs> so I guess right before I let you go, um, what song would you like me to play at the end of this? Let's do OK, Yeah, Sure, Whatever. Okay, I was hoping you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Damon. Well, I want to thank you for coming on again. It's always a blast talking to you. When the um, when the EP comes out or whatever, we're going to have to get you guys back on, or you back on. Dude, I am so down. Hell yeah. Awesome. All right, man. Well, thanks for coming on again, and um, I'll be in touch. All right. Thank you for having me, and I can't wait, man. Right on. Thanks, man. All right. See you. Later. Bye.